Yo. Do you still remember Barney Calhoun? Great! Because I also forgot who the fuck it is! In today's video we're going to talk about him and what he was doing while Gordon Freeman was killing aliens and fighting with Nihilam. Oh no, don't tell me that you already forgot about Freeman and Nihilam. Anyway, you can watch the previous video about Half-Life 1 and recall some moments. Hope it'll be helpful. Half-Life Blue Shift is an expansion for Half-Life 1 made by Gearbox Software that tells us the same story from another point of view. Is it canon? Well, the community agreed on the fact that the expansions are canon unless stated otherwise. So grab some tea and snacks, we're about to see how a simple guard survived the Resonance Cascade. Here in Half-Life Blue Shift we step into the shoes of a simple guard from Black Mesa that is going to have a simple day at work. But first of all let's ride again a fucking tram for 5 minutes. While riding the tram we may see Gordon Freeman a couple times and I'm so glad he isn't lagging. What the f- As I said in the previous video, there are some problems with the communication system in Black Mesa on that day and we have some problems accessing the entrance to the work area. Here we get our armor and pistol and also get some new friends. Holy shit. Here we can use cameras to see Gordon Freeman heading to the test chamber and also a mysterious woman that prepares the crystal for the experiment. Oh well, now I see why the resonance cascade happened. <laughs> Women. <laughs> <laughs> In this part of the game we encounter a lot of signs foreshadowing the resonance cascade, but we're a simple guard so we don't give a fuck. The fun thing about this game is that all our colleagues are fucking Barneys, so it feels like you're interacting with your clones. Our Barney boss tells us that we have to help some scientists that are stuck in an elevator, so we're going to do that. Unfortunately the tram system also has some problems so we have to go by foot. Oh, hello G-man. I thought at least here he will fuck off. In this game we will not encounter G-Man anymore. It leads to the fact that we are a simple guard that no one cares about. We are not special and we are not going to get haunted by G-Man and his employers. Sounds a little sad, but that's it. After reaching the scientists and helping them, the resonance cascade occurs and everyone dies. At least except for our main hero Barney Calhoun. How unexpected was it? We regain consciousness at the bottom of the elevator shaft and manage to witness Finally. how Houndai is eating our clone. Thing. While trying to reach the surface we get to know that the military is trying to cover the incident and to do that they start to kill scientists and everyone associated with the experiment. During our little adventure we save a scientist who tells us that there is a genius scientist who can help us to escape from the Black Mesa. His name is Rosenberg and we have to find him as quickly as possible. Well, thank you for your information. See ya. Fighting with Heku, which stands for fuck off. I told you what this abbreviation stands for in the previous video. We find Dr. Rosenberg and together we head to an old laboratory where Rosenberg can create portals that will teleport us to the outside of the Black Mesa. Unfortunately the laboratory is old as fuck and obviously something doesn't work. So we have to travel to Zen and fix some stupid things in order to be able to teleport. The Zen is pretty much the same as in the original Half-Life 1, so nothing interesting here. After returning, Rosenberg tells us that we run out of electricity because of the teleportation to Zen, so now we have to go down to a power facility level and charge our battery. Oh, I almost forgot. Look what awesome speedrun tricks I used in order to finish the level. After that, everything is done and we can finally leave this terrific research facility. First of all we help the wall scientist team to escape and only after that it's our turn to leave. But before that let's kill some fucking soldiers because it is really interesting. Unfortunately some kind of discharge has affected us and we are teleported to many different places such as Zen and a storage room where we can see Gordon Freeman being captured by soldiers and going to get thrown in a trash compactor. Eventually we teleport where we are supposed to from the beginning. Rosenberg tells us that we are so lucky that we didn't get stuck in an infinite loop and the game ends here. Remember the strange girl preparing the crystal for the experiment? Well, her name is Gina Cross. She's one of the main heroes in the game Half-Life DK that I will definitely make a video about it. 
no I won't. This game was made only for PlayStation and it wasn't ported officially on PC, but trust me, we are not losing much of fun. Half-Life Blue Shift doesn't add much to the story as you can see, but I believe that it's interesting to see how someone else survived the Resonance Cascade, because in the next game, such as Half-Life 2, Barney Calhoun is gonna be our good friend. So you know, it's good to know about his story. Thank you for being with me until this point, hope you liked this video, see you in another one. Falling in love when falling in you, lovers of love plays a game move by move.